All right, guys, got a nice little project. Uh, it's uh, pretty much a, a copycat. Make a copy of that one onto this one. I'm not exactly sure what happened to that one to need new purchase put on this one, but it almost looks like it kind of guards this area here. Not exactly sure, but I'm just doing what the customer is asking. So be a nice little video, uh, pretty simple. Just put these guys on there. Of course, not on that side. It's upside down. But uh, they brought those for me. That and these guys. And uh, slap them on there. So, not bad. A uh, pretty simple little job. I'm going to ask the customer if I can keep this housing so that I can show you guys uh, how to gouge these off. So... I've done that before as well. Just cut these off, put a different style on there. That works pretty good too. So if he allows me, that'll be a nice uh, separate little video. So uh, stay tuned and here we go. I'm gonna make sure I don't get it wrong. Pack car. Out of Pennsylvania. Cool. Okay, small bolts that way. Big bolts that way. Dial pin. Okay, don't want to mess it up. Okay, so now that we got that uh, loaded on the jack stands, <laughs> gotta make sure you do it right and <laughs> facing the right way. These kind of are uh, directional. Here's where the dial pin goes. So, you peek a boo over there and see the dial pin there. So I'm going to be cleaning this up, these spots here, taking some measurements, same thing here. And one of the easiest things to do is just to uh, measure from the flange over to where this sits. So that's pretty standard. And then I'll measure from the centers here to make sure that, that it is correct if in case these axle tubes are slightly different in length. They shouldn't be, but uh, just, just in case, you just never know and hate to weld them on in the wrong spots. So here we go. Usually I like to use flap discs that don't, or kind of wore down, because that way they don't really take off material, they just take off the paint, but this is some really thick paint, so it gummed it up. So I'm gonna, this one's already kind of wore down, so. I'm going to change it out right quick. Okay, so that's level uh, both ways, I guess. And so now, well, before I get uh, bearing surface Nazis on me, it's not a bearing surface, all the important stuff's over here. So, back off. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so now, oh, sorry, over here. Now, preheat, preheat the sides. Get everything ready and start a welding. 
Okay, now I'll start laying these things out. <clears throat> Measuring from there to there, there to there. Measuring across the two. And uh, hopefully they come out right. They should. So here we go. Okay, so I sanded those up, cleaned up the bottoms, had a little bit of a shake in them. Not bad there. Almost nothing. Nothing there either. It was pivoting on on a little spot, and I was trying to determine whether it was on the bottom side of this casting or or the way they were for, forming this. So I just I I didn't like it. Um, would it have been fine? Yes, it would have been fine because it would have been leaning on those welds. But being that it was kind of balancing on that, I didn't want that to be a problem in the future, causing a stress on that contact point uh, with all that weight. I don't know what kind of truck this goes on, so I may as well uh, take that extra step and make sure that it sits flat, flat, flat. And that way the, the welds just do their job of holding on, and this will do its job of being sat on, if that makes sense. Okay, uh, next step now is preheat this baby. Okay, in a situation like this, uh, whereas there's a gap over here, you can't really see it from your side, but there's a slight gap because just the way the, the cast was cast and this is formed, I'd like to run a small little stringer bead to kind of fill up the, the gap uh, before I put a, a big hot pass over it. So I'll show you here in a second. Here we go. Kind of a cool little pass. All right, my second pass now.
should have brushed between the first pass, but it works. All right, we can roll this over to the other side carefully. All right, since there's not this big a gap on this one, I'm just going to fill it all at once. I backed off the wire speed to 26.5 and 4.95. Seems to sit a little bit better. I should do it. It's a plenty hot weld. Uh, pretty decent. It's not going to fall off at least. So that is good. Now move on to the next side. There you go. Get out of the light. Came out all right. So, not bad. It's not falling off, right? So, it's on there. All right, let me just roll this over to the next side. Okay, this one doesn't have, this one doesn't have any gap. It was hot. And it's still got a little paint. I didn't get all the paint off, which is good and bad, right? But it burns it out, so it's fine. Uh, internet uh, inspectors. Yes, it's wrong. But will it hold? Yes. There you go, look at that, it, it's good. And a couple little bits of uh, silica 
uh, glass on the top. But once you clean that up, won't even be able to tell. All right, now that's the center one above the pumpkin. Time to preheat. Let off a lot of BBs. Yeah, I backed off the wire even more to 485 and 26.5.
plenty hot to me. So let me brush that up and give a look at it. Well, looks like that should do it. Well, if anything, black paint makes a bad welder look decent. <laughs> so, yeah, it looks like factory. So, as long as I did it better than factory or as good as factory, then we are good. And so, I think, I think that should do it. And I guess the key things here would be to make sure you clean the material good enough. I was a little bit shy on that on some spots, but worked out well. No pinholes showed up and preheat preheat these things these things don't like to be oh still hot welded cold so i guess that's about it uh, thanks for your support and thanks for watching and i guess we will catch you guys on the next one